Anytime you have a set of data, there are four things that you must describe about that data set or the data distribution. You must describe the shape of the data distribution. You need to give a numerical summary for the measure of center and the measure of spread or dispersion. And the last thing you must do is you must indicate if there are any outliers in the data set. In this lesson, we are going to talk about four different measures of dispersion or spread. Each of these measures is a statistic or a function of the data. The first two are closely related, the variance and the standard deviation, range, and the interquartile range. Let's first talk about the variance. The variance is a measure of how spread out the data is around the mean of the data set. It is an average, and average is in quotations, and we'll talk about that in a minute, why that is. It's an average of the sum of the squared distances between each data point and the mean of the data set. Let's look at our formula of sample variance. We use S squared to designate sample variance. Here is why we have average in quotes. We are summing n different numbers, but we are ultimately dividing by n minus 1. So it is not a true average. If it was a true average, we would divide by n. But we are dividing by n minus 1, so we averages in quotes. What we do to get the sample variance is we take every data point, starting from data point 1 and going up to data point and the nth data point. We take that data point, we subtract the mean of the data set, and then we square that quantity. We add n of those numbers together, and then we divide by n minus 1 to get our sample variance. The units of measure of the variance are the square of the units of measure of the data values. Is the variance a resistant or robust statistic? The answer is no, because when we calculate the sample variance, we use the sample mean in our calculation, and we know that the sample mean is not a resistance statistic. So no, the sample variance is not a resistance statistic. When should you use the sample variance as your measure of dispersion for a set of data? You should use the sample variance when the data distribution is relatively symmetric and there are no outliers in your data set. If there are outliers, variance is not a resistance statistic, so you do not want to use it if you have outliers in your data set. Let's now talk about the sample standard deviation. Again, the sample standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the data is around the mean of the data set, just like the variance. The standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. Why is this important? Taking the square root makes the units of measure of the standard deviation the same as the units of measure of the data values. So if your data set is, if all the data values are measured in feet, your sample standard deviation will be in feet, and it's easy to think about. Your sample variance will be in feet squared, and it's sometimes hard to think about in the square units as opposed to the original units of measure. So how do you calculate the sample standard deviation designated by S? You first calculate the sample variance, and then you take the square root. So the sample standard deviation is the square root of the sample variance. Is the sample standard deviation a resistance statistic? The answer is no. If the sample variance is not resistant, then the sample standard deviation can't be resistant. The sample standard deviation can be used under the same situation or scenario that a sample variance is used. That is, when the data distribution is relatively symmetric and there are no outliers. I think it's easier to report the standard deviation as your measure of spread rather than the variance if you can do that because, again, the units of measure for the standard deviation are the same as the units of measure for your data values. Now let's talk about the range of a data set. Again, the range is a measure of the spread of the data set. How do you calculate the range? 
the range is just the maximum data value minus the minimum data value. Is the range a resistance statistic? The answer is no. Here we are using the maximum value. If that is an extreme value, our range can be greatly influenced by either the max or the min of a data set. So no, the range is not a resistance statistic. Because it's not resistant, you only want to use the range if there are no outliers in your data set. The last measure of dispersion is the interquartile range. The interquartile range is a measure of the spread of the middle 50% of the data values from a data set. The interquartile range is the range of the middle 50% of the data values. So how do you calculate the interquartile range? You first need to calculate the median of the data set. Then you need to calculate the first quartile designated by Q1. How do you do this? You forget about the median and the median or the numbers that were used to calculate the median and all, everything above that value in your data set. Then you calculate the median of the remaining data values and that is the first quartile. Then you need to calculate the third quartile. How do you calculate the third quartile? You forget about the median or the numbers used to calculate the median and all the data values below that and you only use the data values that are greater than that. You calculate the me median of those data values and that is Q3. The interquartile range is then the third quartile minus the first quartile. Is the interquartile range a resistance statistic? The answer is yes. Presumably, the middle 50% of the data does not contain any extreme values, therefore it is a resistance statistic, which means you should use this as your measure of dispersion when there are outliers in your data set or the data distribution is not symmetric. So of the four measures of dispersion or spread that you can use to report for a data distribution, the only one that is resistant is the interquartile range. So any time you have outliers or a skewed distribution, you want to report the interquartile range as your measure of dispersion. Because reporting the variance and standard deviation are basically one and the same because the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance, I would choose the standard deviation because the units of measure for the standard deviation are the same as the units of measure of your original data set. And now you should be familiar with the variance and standard deviation, the range of a data set, and the interquartile range of a data set. And you should be able to calculate all four of those if you're given a set of data.